It's March 23rd, 2021, and this video is called Sowing Heirloom Seeds. Now, I'm going to show you how to sow seeds, and if you do it this way, you could pop your seeds in about three or four days, especially if they're fresh. Some seeds will take a little longer, but mostly tomato seeds can pop in three days. And it's not too late to sow seeds right now. I'm in a zone five. And usually the annuals will go out the last week of May, first week of June, depending uh, how the weather is going to be. You get that late frost. But this is what I recommend with the starting mix. It's by Magic Moss. It's just the seed starter. So you're going to pay $20. I paid for three cubic feet. That's where we start. Okay, now this is the mixture right here is very dry. Now I usually use a four inch container and you can go smaller or bigger. I wouldn't recommend with these unless you're putting in like one or two seeds which I don't do. I use the four inch container and I put a whole ton of seeds and then transplant the seedlings later. But ideally if you got room this is you want to do a one gallon, uh, one gallon container and the roots will get bigger you got more room to grow so first of all the containers you want to use brand new ones but if you don't if you can't you could can reuse them but you want to soak them in a 10 percent bleach mix and this is going to uh, disinfect any kind of uh, critters on here fungus bacteria that might uh, ruin your seedlings but basically what you want to do is fill this up then you're going to have to water it in and it's very important to water it in because this stuff stays really dry and it's really hard to do once you have the seedlings in the seeds are in there it's going to be harder for you to uh, get that medium wet and once it's wet it takes longer for it to dry out so basically water it in now this has been watered already so it takes a little longer but uh, definitely it's worth it in the long run and the seedlings will not dry out as fast Okay, now I'm collecting seeds, mostly all heirloom seeds from all over the world. Now an heirloom seed will come true to seed the following year, whether it's uh, been grown for a hundred years or a thousand years. So this is the, the uh, moist seed starting mix. So all you have to do is sprinkle these seeds down. And give them some space now I did this uh, variety already before this is called orange accordion and I'll show you uh, what I already had done but this one I would usually put about 25 or 40 seeds in here but all I got left in the packet were five seeds so that's all I'm going to do on this one now the key is is to get this stuff and it's hard to find but I was able to find it online on Amazon it's a Mosser Lee product and it's called no, no damp off so basically what it is is it's a shredded sphagnum moss and you got to be careful with it it's very light and dry so it kind of gets in the air so you don't want to uh, dissipate this stuff too much or else wear a mask when you're doing this because it, it it does get into the air it's very fine but what this does it will prevent damping off in your seeds some seeds are more hardy than others but I've noticed with other seeds like maybe like petunias or snapdragons they will damp off a fungus will attack them and this prevents them from getting attacked so basically if you don't have it you could just put another light layer of the seed starter on top of it if you don't have the damp off 
and you only cover it probably the uh, the depth the depth of what you put on top of it is about the same size as the seed. You don't you don't want to bury the stuff. So what you do is take this. You got to be very careful here. and you cover the seeds with it then what we're gonna do is we're gonna wet it in alright what I like to use is this little nozzle it's a it's a it's a mister it atomizes and, and breaks down that water into a very fine mist and it helps on your delicate uh, watering because if you use the regular hose especially when they become seedlings that might knock them over but this creates a fine mist and uh, this is what you want to wet it in with so check it out As you can see, it makes a fine mist. The next up is labeling and labels. What I'm using is Evian bottles. I ended up uh, cutting them with a little point on them to go into the soil. And uh, it's cheap. You can use any bottles, plastic bottles, but I like these because they're a little bit thicker and uh, they're harder to, so they're not so flimsy and they're free. So uh, labeling is one of the most important things, especially for me because I got to know what variety I'm growing. I would not go with this Sharpie because after a year the labels will wear off. I'm going with this... Uh, this painter's pen you can look those up and if you want to spend the money the way to do it is uh, they've got these printers that will uh, burn the variety the name into the label that you buy but that's expensive the smallest one I seen was a thousand dollars so this is called tomato orange accordion if you want you can put the year on it and then stick it into the container okay this is really cool I made this box it's my seed starting box and you can look into doing it too and this is how I'm able to pop my tomato seeds in three days so what you want to do is you take your little seeds that you just sowed and you put it inside of the box so what you're gonna do is close that lid it's gonna generate some heat and they are gonna pop in two days I did these on Friday and on Monday this is already uh, Tuesday but on Monday they, they were already up you can see those guys right there are coming up as well and the key with this is I'm gonna show you the secret because if you have a greenhouse there's a little leg on there if you have a greenhouse you're gonna come across a lot of little creatures that are gonna wanna eat your seeds because there's those seeds are food first of all my number one enemy are these ants and you can't do away with it because they're everywhere and I don't use any pesticides so you just gotta live with it but the key is the moat it's just a container that I put the I under I flip the uh, the holder the tray upside down 
So the containers are above the water, but you have the water where the ants can't get to the seeds, and it has helped. Now, this right here is the key to getting your seeds. It's a heat mat. And I bought one that's a little bit longer than the box, so you got to measure. They come in different sizes, and it, there it is. It's made by, uh, it's called Ready Heat. Let's do this upside down so you can read it. There's the label on it, and it basically goes to a plug. It's heated. Now, you could set it to a thermostat, but I don't. And this is the key to generating heat. Now the door has been open and it's at 80 degrees right now. And with that kind of temperature, these seeds pop. Now the key is you don't want to leave them too long in these boxes too. And as I could tell you, see there's the damping off right there. See how there's some of them that have died? Especially with this heat trapped in here, it might uh, promote the fungus. So once they start getting out to a little size, you want to transfer them to a table outside of the box. Or else they'll, st they'll st start to get long and stringy. Now the other key is, if you've got a greenhouse, if you look really closely, there's wire mesh. The bottom of the box is lined with this wire mesh and that's for the creatures, the mice and the moles and the chipmunks so they don't burrow into the box. So if you have that, that will, cre that will stop the big creatures from coming in and then the moat will stop the small creatures like ants and little insects because actually, here's the other thing, the first little green leaves, although they're not true leaves, that come out of the cedar of the cotyledons, those are packed with nutrients. And what was happening with me is without the moat, not only will the seeds, you'll, you'll see there will be little holes the next day if you don't have a moat. And every, one, every seed is going to be missing. That's the ants. And then they get to the next level, where if you have the cotyledons growing, you're going to see they're like little uh, trees that have been cut down. They will steal the cotyledons. So you definitely, you might be growing inside, it'll take a little longer without the heat box. But if you're growing in a greenhouse and you want to stop those ants from coming in, you definitely want the moat. And you're going to have seeds like crazy. Now this is a test on the old seeds and I haven't been able to get them cracked so I'm going to throw these out and re-sow the fresh ones. These are two year old seeds. You could still save seeds but they need to be put into little jars that are um, that the oxygen doesn't get to them because these were just open packets of seeds and that dries them out. So you could, I have seeds that are from 2017 and they're popping in two days also but it's because they were in glass jars. Now remember, heat, sun, and temperature will break down those seeds. So if you have them in a refrigerator, there's no sunlight to them, and the temperature, you don't want to freeze seeds, but you can refrigerate seeds, and they will last a long time. I can crack seeds that are over 10 years old easily if they're stored right. So there's the heat mat, and here's the seedling table. Now after they come out of that box, these are about three to four weeks old already. Now here are some examples of how many I'm sowing in a four inch container. Now this is what you don't want to do, but this was a test on the poppies to make sure they were viable. These were from 2017 and they're still cracking. And now this is at the point where they're going to want to be transplanted. And I'm going to do a video on transplanting seedlings. But the other thing too, with your Evian bottles, I was able to make 
watering little bo watering bottles because if you do this with the regular hose you're gonna knock them all over you could do them with that mister which is fine but if you want to get some individuals all I did is put a little hole in the Evian bottle and uh, watch uh, Alright, so sow some seeds. You can grow your own vegetables or uh, annuals. It's a lot cheaper than paying $10, $11 a flat. But this is how I do it. And uh, these are all my heirloom varieties of tomatoes and peppers. That uh, Here's the brown jalapeno pepper. This was another test. that I wanted to make sure my seeds that I'm selling are actually germinating and it almost looks like I, this is grown last year brown jalapeno pepper and I got 100% germination on it so these are all the varieties that I'm going to save seeds this year and you're going to be able to buy uh, the seeds from organic plant it next season all right I wanted to do some peppers to show you this is a cool one called pumpkin spice jalapeno and I wanted to do that tomato just had so few that I wanted to show you how I do some peppers with a full container I like to give them a couple spacings so they're not on top of each other now you could do a couple containers of one variety now peppers you gotta be patient because it takes a little bit longer for them to crack but if they're fresh they're still gonna pop for you and now the most careful part is putting on the no damp off now you could do the seed starter mix on this but I recommend the no damp off and you shouldn't have a problem with uh, damping which I will show you real quickly what it looks like in the seedlings when it happens of course I gotta water it in and put the tag on it actually this year I was pretty good with the no damping off I didn't use it yet I just need sea starter but this is a variety of vinca and this is the only one. I had a couple with the basils are notorious for it, but they already dried up. And this is a example right over. See those guys like right there, right there, right there at the damping. And then let me show you what happened with the tomatoes with the mouse this is a cool variety this is called big rainbow tomato what happened was when I set them on the table it was the mice that ended up chewing off the, the cotyledons some are trying to make it back but unfortunately I had to uh, set some traps to catch them and actually you could see, look at that little ring you could see some of the little bit of mold or fungus growing in the soil see it right over here you could see that little ring but these plants are big enough where it's not going to affect them now that right there would probably attack the smaller varieties like petunias and stuff like that here's another one that got damped off in that corner but they already dried up and you can't really see them so let me show you real quickly what I grew this year there's cosmos, xenia, marigolds, dahlias, cosmos there's hollyhocks, ageratums, dianthus, petunia here is my test run on the mountain stream uh, morning glory I'm going to grow a lot of these for next year. This was my test run on the 
Brad's Atomic Grape earlier in the year. This is my first run. And look how big they are. These definitely need to be transplanted. But uh, what else do I have here? Here's the brown jalapeno test run. Here's some more coleus. Look at this one. I found the variegated tomato. That should be really cool. That one is called Painted Lady. I've got, uh, what do I have here? Chinese cabbage, golden chi Chinese cabbage. I got alyssums, I got phlox, I got heliotrope, celosia, zinnias, chives. I got a lot of everything going here. So if I could do it, you could do it. And let me show you. This is one of my favorite salvias. And look at you could see it already. This is Salvia Argentia. Pretty sure it's a biennial, but it's worth growing. Look at the the leaves when they grow older, they look like cobwebs. Really cool. I got my hands on an African basil. I got Thai basil. I've got uh, all kinds of stuff here. This was a test run on the Mexican tomatilla that I'm selling. That I practically sold out this year. This was a hot item this year. I'm going to grow more of that for next year. And this is cool. This is the spoon tomato. The tiniest tomato. Real, real tiny. You can fit like a dozen of them in a spoon. I think that's why they called it spoon. So get out there, sow your seeds. Seeds seem to be a hot commodity this year with everybody outside in the garden growing their own food. It's not only more nutritious, it's way cheaper than buying vegetables. Tomatoes are going for a dollar, two dollars a piece. Um, it's incredible how expensive the vegetables have got and you could grow tomatoes are so easy grow them in your backyard save on money and uh, there's a sense of accomplishment when uh, you got them growing and the nutritional value is just out of this world when it's freshly picked Thank you.